We're starting now? Okay. Hi, Wendy here. Um, I never quite know when Douglas is gonna start filming. Um, I'm here visiting with you. Uh, well, this week is the ninth anniversary of George's death. I, I can't believe it's already been nine years and, and yet I can. Um, and yet he lives still, doesn't he? In many ways, and I'm here to share one of those with you today. Uh, George died on December the 14th, 2013. And, um, who would have thought this is where we'd be? I asked Douglas, who's wonderfully filming us for us today, often, how did we get here? So how did we get here? <laughs> In the snow. In a magnificent December day. You know, last year Douglas filmed for me and I I was very sad uh, sharing one of George's last paintings called He Stopped Loving Her Today. Very moving. Um, I hope that if you missed it, you'll, you'll look it up uh, on YouTube or on my social media because um, it's a very poignant retelling of one of his last pieces. Um, but here I thought we would talk a little more about the light, and it's just about to peek out from those clouds there again, here in New Mexico, with one of George's most significant pieces that he was truly excited about, uh, Colors of My Mind. So the idea of making a three-dimensional blue dog is one that really kind of George was obsessed with for many years, for about a decade, actually. I watched him play with all different kinds of ideas of how to make it happen, and uh, he kept struggling with it and, and couldn't really get it. And, and I mean, he literally would cut out things and try to make it because, uh, let's face it, this is not a three-dimensional image. It's not a character. In fact, it's not a dog at all. You know, it has no backside. It doesn't run or bark or chase its tail. It's become very much something else, very much a, a symbol. And we can dive into all those possibilities on another another video. But here today, um, let's talk about this one. So how did we get to this? Well, one evening, George and I were in New Orleans sitting and waiting for a table at Houston's. I bet some of you have done that before on St. Charles Avenue. And we were sitting there at the bar waiting for our table and I was going on and on about something as usual. And George was playing with the cocktail napkins. I brought a couple with me here today that have New Orleans scenes on them of New Orleans to call, made by my dear friend, Tiffa Boutte. Just thought I'd spotlight a few artists today. Um, anyway, pretty fun. And so he's fiddling with the cocktail napkins. I don't know what he's doing. And all of a sudden, he does this. He does this and he says I've got it and I said got what and he said the sculpture and it's gonna be 40 feet tall and I'm gonna put it at the base of the Luling Bridge 40 feet I'm sorry 40 stories tall and I'm gonna put it at the base of the Luling Bridge and it's gonna be a Louisiana Welcome Center what and he said I'm gonna build it like a rig he had it all worked out, just like that, just like this. Oh, here comes our mind. So that was quite exciting. And I knew George, boy, you know, it was such a great trait to have in, in anybody, but especially I have to say in a spouse, and that is everything he said he was gonna do, I could count on. And so I knew this was gonna happen. And sure enough, that next week, he met with Begno Manufacturing, his good friend Don Begno in Lafayette, Louisiana, and they made a prototype, four feet tall. George hand painted it. It was really cool, a red, yellow, and blue, three-sided, just like those cocktail napkins. Worked out great. So then he said, let me make a bigger one. So he made one eight feet, and he took it to an automotive paint body shop, because of course this thing has got to be outside. Remember, face of the Luling Bridge, 40 stories. And he has it painted like a car and finished like a car and so fantastic with automotive sealer, the whole thing. And that one today you can go see anytime in the Best Off Sculpture Garden at the New Orleans Museum of Art right there in City Park. He donated it on behalf of my mother, Mignon Wolf, who he loved, who we loved, and who loved to walk there. Another great artist. Anyway, go see it. 
So he went on and made a few more, each one bigger. Maybe some of you have seen, I hope. There's a 28-foot one in uh, New Orleans, in Mattery, Louisiana, actually, right in front of um, Lakeside Mall there on Veterans Memorial Highway. And uh, there is also one um, installed not too long ago in the George Rodriguez Park, just completed in George's hometown, the Bayou Tesh Museum there in uh, New Iberia on Main Street. There is also one in uh, Rosemary Beach, Florida, near my hometown on Highway 30A in the sunlight, very much like this one, which is the most recent installation here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Magnificent Santa Fe with a whole different kind of light, right? The southwestern light. Now, George, by the time he did ones like this, was really getting inventive with the light. And he said, I want to get really creative with this paint. And he came up with this idea to use this very rare, uh, special automotive flip paint that changes in the light. It's changing even as Douglas is filming for us today. And you know, I think about that here on the anniversary of George's death, the ninth anniversary, how everything changes uh, in the light. Uh, he changed and is in the light. Um, I think we all, we all do that. He's sparkling in the sunshine. I want to thank the Ezequia Madre House. This is where this is in Santa Fe, New Mexico and the Women's International Study Center, which is housed here. This magnificent home behind us was the home to three generations of women here in Santa Fe. It is a beautiful historic home and museum, one that I am really uh, proud to be a supporter of. And uh, they, they have magnificent exhibitions and performances, and, and they are mostly preservationists of, um, well, an art historical part of this incredible part of America. Um, these women were great lovers of the Native American arts. Artists also from all over the world came and visited them here and left their marks in the forms of Christmas cards and self-portraits and magnificent plein air painting. And these women also contributed their own uh, artworks to that collection and now they have very graciously, through the current stewards here, Jordan Young and Pilar Law and Martin Schultz and many wonderful people who take care of this place, have added Rodrigue to the mix, uh, blending old Santa Fe with new Santa Fe. George loved it here. He felt very connected to this place. Oh, come to the side. Thank you for listening. Come see the sculpture. And I hope to see you soon. We've got wonderful exhibitions planned next year, a whole series of them, honoring George Rodriguez on the 10th anniversary of his death. And uh, visit legacyarttour.org.